Welcome to another Observability Lab. Today we talk about what is business observability with Dynatrace. And I have Klaus with me. Klaus, you have been working with many of our large enterprise customers, really elevating observability from just purely technical to providing insights and value to the business, understanding what is the business processes. Uh, is their business operating successfully? And if not, is it the business problem? Is it the process problem? Or is it a technical problem? And for that, Klaus, thank you so much for being back. I want to really learn more about the value of Dynatrace that we deliver for business. So fill us in. Thanks for having me, Andy. And <clears throat> I really appreciate uh, taking the time here to talk about business observability. Many people that are thinking about Dynatrace think about Dynatrace in a traditional way. Mm -hmm. Application observability, infrastructure observability, uh, user, real user monitoring, all of that being part of Dynatrace. But that gave, uh, put it us in a position where we can extract and reuse all the data that we are collecting in any way to drive business insights, mm -hmm. to drive their uh, additional uh, value for you that you have and solving problems that you have in with your traditional systems. Maybe real-time insights because this is something mm -hmm. business obs uh, observability solutions are all in real time. No IT operations person would wait for availability issues to show yeah, up. True. Yeah. However, when you look on the business side of the house, real-time insights in what is happening is really, really cumbersome. And usually you're getting your daily, weekly, monthly report, and then you're trying to find out, just like, like you said, is it an IT issue that was impacting things? Or was it my marketing campaign failing? Uh, did I forget to put some coins into the marketing uh, campaign? Uh, yeah. For the Let's take a look at it. Yeah. Let's, let me show you what, a, uh, what it is. When we talk about business observability at Dynatrace, there are three core pillars that we are covering. It's first thing, real-time business decision-making, mm -hmm. giving you all this data always in context with IT. So no longer when you are sitting in the same room trying to figure out who has a problem, who's, whose data set is the right one, having everything in context, really cool. Second area business processes, mm -hmm. really, really hard to follow. Uh, given that uh, IT is changing constantly with the dynamics of uh, cloud, really hard to do, use traditional business process monitoring solutions to get uh, a role in here. And last but not least, yep, IT also is a cost factor. We're giving you insights in you know, how much uh, it costs or uh, sustainability, carbon footprint reduction is there a big topic because cost and carbon go hand in hand. Mm -hmm. We're not only giving you the insights, but the core is really we want to help you automate. Mm -hmm. Automate tasks and uh, remediate situations that, you, that are uh, occurring to your business. Maybe a food delivery not happening mm -hmm. or maybe an, a, a fund trying to remediate the situation where fund managers are not mm -hmm. getting their orders through. Mm -hmm. Because when you th look at this example from a multinational fund that we are having, you can look at what the fund manager's experience was when he placed the order in the UI. That is useful, mm -hmm. useful insights, but it's not the whole story. Mm -hmm. The whole story is it's just the start. Mm -hmm. He's creating this order. It takes multiple days, multiple clearances till this uh, whole order actually uh, went through and is settled. Mm -hmm. And this is from a real customer that you work with actually, right? Actually, yep. Yeah. Um, small fund, a couple of hundred billion uh, dollars worth and that was their first use case. And the cool thing now is when you look at these steps, in reality it was like 25 steps. Yeah on all these places, you need observability from a tech perspective in any way. Mm -hmm. Gathering most of the information from maybe from log files, maybe from uh, yeah, ERP systems, databases, whatever. You have to monitor that from an observability point of view in any way. Mm -hmm. And we are now leveraging Dynatrace to elevate it and see additional insights. Yeah. Like how long does it take end to end for this process? Were there any process exceptions from a business perspective? Were there any technical issues impacting? Or like simple qu questions, how much volume was, was actually traded here? Mm -hmm. 
those kind of insights uh, you can get with business observability from Dynatrace. So what I really like about this, because I come more from the technical side, right? I talk a lot about how we can automatically observe your microservices, your applications, uh, how you can look into logs to extract technical information. But now you're telling me every organization needs to do this anyway, technical monitoring, because you want to make sure that your ERPs, all of your systems are available. And now with Dynatrace, we can extract business information from all of these systems we're monitoring anyway, and then provide an end-to-end -end view, as you saw it here, from create order to settlement, and calculate a lot of the key business KPIs. And because everything is still connected, we also know if something is red, why is it red? Is it the process? Is it the bad product that we're trying to sell? Or is it a technical issue that was caused by a configuration change in your deployment? That's really cool. And I think it's now time. It's time. For it's time what, from it's slides to, to take a look at what this looks like in a product perspective. You're a nice screenshot. You have the URL. You can take a look at the playground. Uh, in the playground, uh, if you jump there, it will look, if you follow that URL, it will look like this. You end up uh, here in this launch pad that allows you to take a look at business observability mm -hmm. yourself. So folks, just a reminder, check the link in the video, you get to the playground, the playground is publicly available for everyone, the only thing you need to do is either have already an existing Dynatrace account, you can sign up for a trial, or you can just sign up for the playground, the only thing you need is an email, but please now, Klaus, go ahead. Yeah, uh, it guides you through things, you can just follow links, and uh, today we uh, don't want to bore you with another uh, order fulfillment uh, process. Let's take a look at uh, insurance use case uh, and th uh, think about a claims case. When you think about a claim uh, and you're an insurer, the first thing that comes to your mind is like, hey, claims get registered. Mm -hmm. Claims get registered is the website, is the mobile app where you do the registration. Is that up and running? Is that actually uh, uh, has a business KPI attached mm -hmm. to it? Like how long does it take? to register this claim. That's kind of information that you need mm -hmm. to know when you're responsible for claim regi registration. Mm -hmm. But then the customer experience continues because this is just the beginning of a claim. Uh, you need to know where all documents submitted, mm -hmm. where are there any internal reviews, uh, third party reviews maybe. And finally, did we as an insurer pay out uh, the customer and was the claim finally settled? Yeah. Mm -hmm. The questions for each of these uh, domains uh, or these steps, these five major steps that we painted here, is in every company you have somebody responsible for parts and everybody's asking the same question. Is my business KPI correct? Is IT working fine? Mm -hmm. Do I have some security issues? Mm -hmm. And actually, what does it cost? Or if you are more into sustainability, how much carbon mm -hmm. does this part of the IT actually emit. And this is the beauty of Dynatrace. Not only give, do we give you this real-time end-to-end view here uh, on a dashboard, but we also uh, give you the ability to dive into the process itself. So with the business flow app, we allow you to pull together this, this uh, claim process and really take a look at the individual claims. So what we are seeing here is a couple of core metrics, like what's the claim volume we are dealing with, uh, how many are going through the process end to end, how many have errors, mm -hmm. how long does it take usually. I'm not only having here the static KPIs, but also the ability to look at it over time. Yeah. And I can also make, uh, if I want, Davis aware, so he should alert me in case of unusual uh, behavior on any of these uh, metrics. But what is key is also you can basically take a look at this process and uh, even have loops or uh, hmm. forks where like, yep, you requested further evidence or like internal review, you may, depending on the, vol uh, the, the um, claims uh, amount, hmm. have multi-tier reviews. The thing here is we also see that on the document submission it seems that we're in trouble and the ability to just uh, point and click here and get here basically all the 
claims that are impacted uh, on that step and having here the ability to filter down and say like, hey, just give me those uh, claims that are actually having a business exception mm -hmm. is key. So we're and defining a business exception now from a technical exception to a business exception. That's a cool exactly. term, yeah? yeah? Yeah, exactly. Because uh, think about trying to pay somewhere. Yeah. It's an exception if you cannot pay with your credit card yeah. and it's uh, your credit card is at limit. Yeah. Technically, everything will go fine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You will not see any disturbance in the tech metrics. Yeah. And uh, yeah, the cool thing is we can dive into these submissions into these. Uh, hmm. And we see that this one started with like somebody uh, called in to start the uh, process. And then we had basically this issue here uh, on the document submission. We also have additional information. What was it? The claim type mm -hmm. was cargo mm -hmm. uh, relevant. And I've added here before the demo, this DT entity host. Mm -hmm. What is that? This is actually the link from the business side to the tech side. Mm -hmm. So this is the uh, server. It can be a Kubernetes node. It can yeah. be whatever your, your uh, tech is running on. But you can very simple jump from this very business view to like, hey, I want to know what that means mm -hmm. and what is this IT infrastructure piece that is sitting behind here. It's just a click away. Mm -hmm. That's cool, yeah. And this finally really connects. And this, this is, I think, really the power now, what you're, what you're talking about. First of all, when you have your basic instrumentation covered for your availability monitoring, your technical availability monitoring, we have all of your hosts, your processes, your developer logs and traces, but we can extract the business data, giving an overview to the business, but then also link it back again. I really also liked your dashboard earlier, where for every process you said, do we meet our business KPIs? And on the same step, do we have any technical issues? Do we have any security issues? And you always have the full end-to-end -end connection, right? Left to right, top to bottom. Yeah, that's, right. that's awesome. Yeah. And how that connection continues is uh, not only the tech metrics you see here, but mm -hmm. if I go here to info, uh, you also see like to which cost center mm -hmm. is this machine oh. allocated to. Cool. Uh, also like ownership. We have here a piece of infrastructure that is serving a critical piece of our claims process, but from an IT operations perspective, we don't know who yeah. is actually the owner of, of, yeah. of this, uh, of this uh, piece of uh, equipment here. And that's, that's the cool thing of Dynatrace and the power of Dynatrace. Cool. Obviously, you can then use automation or workflows to automatically notify people that our owners, we can also enforce ownership. So if I see something like this, I would recommend uh, get a daily report from Dynatrace about critical system components that don't yet have ownership and then make sure you get this information there. Awesome. Cool demo. All of this is on the Dynatrace playground. That means Folks, if you're watching this, you can just play around with this yourself. Um, I think we want to wrap it up maybe with a little bit of an overview of what does it take to actually get all of this data in. Let's take a look at it and let's see what's uh, the thing behind it. It's what we call business events. We had to introduce as an observability solution business events for various reasons. One of it is who is allowed to see business data? Mm -hmm. Not every engineer should see the global revenue, the global claims uh, volumes that are going through. That's why business events are a separate space in Dynatrace. Yet you've seen they are interconnected. Mm -hmm. So if you have the permission, you can go from A to B, very, very simple. Um, also, business data has different uh, char characteristics. Mm -hmm. uh, business events do serve other use cases. And I like logs because logs is a wonderful data type, I always say, but it serves three use cases. Mm -hmm. And that leads to very heavy investments into logging solutions because three use cases are your security team is looking at log lines, mm -hmm. your developers are looking for uh, log lines, and your BI folks are also looking at log mm -hmm. lines mm -hmm. because that's where they are retrieving the business data from. And we have created a mechanism with the open pipeline to simply take this existing investment in logs and separate it out. And basically, instead of having one big log file, having the ability to uh, see and take a look at business data separately because you want to store it way longer than mm -hmm. a, uh, a 
log that an engineer needs. Besides the log, with Dynatrace, the beauty of one agent comes to uh, at hand. The time to first insight. Mm -hmm. You just need to configure which data point to capture, not always uh, having to ask an engineer to change the app to give you the KPI that you are after. Mm -hmm. So you take months to get it through with one agent, just a simple configuration change, and you're getting uh, data. It takes minutes versus months to get uh, to the first insight. And then it basically fuels, this, the business events fuels uh, all the analytics. Whether you do it deep down, individual, via Dynatrace query language, mm -hmm. go into the individual pieces, or leverage some out of the box apps like we have seen before, the BizFlow, to do your analysis uh, right there. This is basically uh, the engine cool. that we are driving here. Cool. So if I want to wrap it up quickly, I think what you're saying is we are building on the foundational investment in observability that we have. Logs, metrics, traces, uh, external APIs. So if you're already doing critical observability of your critical systems, then we can extract business data. We can I also now understand why we define business events, because you want to store and treat business data separately. Retention, who is allowed to see the data, and then we can leverage the rich analytics capabilities in Dynatrace to analyze, to get dashboards, to get alerted, and if you need it, also connect it with the underlying technical data. That's cool. And I think this is it for this video to get an overview of what is Dynatrace, what is business observability with Dynatrace. And we'll record a second session, folks. Uh, check out the link as well for a more technical deep dive on how you can actually do exactly what's shown on this slide, how we can extract business data from logs, from metrics, from traces. Um, yeah. Thank you so much, Klaus. It was awesome. Thank you.